What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tears Move back again with another video. This is by WrestleMania 10 Most Unexpected WWE Wrestler Tapouts. This one is interesting because when I look back, there's a bunch of people that like barely tapped out. Number one that I can think of, Brock Lesnar, being only, I think he tapped to, I know, Kurt Angle. I'm not sure about Chris Benoit. I'm pretty sure it was just the one time with, with Kurt. Uh, I know John Cena tapped out early on in his career. Uh, I'm wondering if you know Randy Orton's gonna be in here a few times. Um, th there's there's a few that like comes to mind, but this is like is gonna be enjoyable and lit. Before we dive in, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you love the Smooth Squad family, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on other content. With that being said, let's hop into the video. Ten of the most unexpected W. Boy. 10 of the most unexpected WWE tapouts. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Number 10, Asuka. When Asuka first arrived in WWE, she was protected yeah. incredibly well. She During lost to Charlotte NXT, at Triple Mania. Triple H insisted that Asuka wasn't pinned and this subsequently meant that she was called up to the main roster undefeated. Yeah. Just a few months into her main roster run, her streak would be shattered in a match on the grand stage of WrestleMania. At WrestleMania 34, Asuka wrestled Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title, and in shocking fashion, she tapped out to Flair. This Which was a booking crazy. move that not a single fan saw coming. Heading into the match, Asuka was... <sighs> Asuka winning a Rumble. Perfect. Asuka should have been the one to beat Charlotte. It would have one helped Asuka's momentum. I think people to this day would still look at her with a different aura. Not saying she hasn't gotten a lot of success, a lot of popularity, and a great push that, you know, like throughout her career in WWE. But imagine how people would look at her, how much more her matches could have potentially, like, felt given she would have, like, beaten Charlotte. They, they shouldn't have had her tap nonetheless either. The undisputed favorite to win the matchup, and nobody could have ever predicted Flair to win, and nobody in their wildest imagination could have predicted Asuka to tap out to the figure eight. Fans are still debating the match finish years later, as some fans believe that this was a backwards move to make Asuka tap out to Flair, while some believe it was the right time for Asuka to lose, especially as she was now full time on the WWE main roster. I mean, I think. Number nine, Kane. Whilst Kane lost a lot. I mean, you could make that argument, but then again, Asuka, what's up? What's up with Asuka? You could have her beat Charlotte, stay undefeated, have that undefeated, you know, undefeated streak as champion, then make whoever beats her on. Like, come on, when Gunther was the UK champion for years, he didn't get beaten until he lost to Ilya Dragunov in a great match that put an aura on Ilya Dragunov. And I think that still people feel this in the NXT world slash, you know, the diehard fans to this day. That could have happened with, with Asuka, bro. During his first few years in WWE, the Big Red Machine tapping out was simply out of the question. However, yeah, when Kane, Kane was Kurt pushed Angle crazy early. WWE believed it was the right moment for Kane to be booked to show some element of vulnerability. During the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin would interfere, attacking Kane's leg with a steel chair. This interference allowed Angle to lock in the trademark ankle lock and make the former WWE Champion tap out. Yep. It was a surprising finish, yet due to how legitimate and credible Angle was, it didn't damage it, it, Kane's it didn't. aura and mystique. It simply added another layer of character development to both Kane and Kurt Angle. If anything, got Kane, Kane more over. Velasquez. It became apparent from the moment King Velasquez debuted in WWE that they had major plans for there, the former There UFC shouldn't have been star. anything Velasquez with this. He shouldn't have been doing better be. This should have been given a more a longer time. Smackdown, and Velasquez was instantly booked in a WWE title match on pay-per-view against Lesnar. Uh, there were reports at the time that WWE were high on Velasquez, and they seemed to be a huge... Vince had this thing on advertising another show at an at a already big show 
and he did stuff that was unnecessary like burying Kofi in like 10 11 seconds just to bring out Cain Velasquez and promote the next like Saudi show that that was stupid like disconnect between wwe and the fans when it came to him yes. wwe believed he was this huge star that wwe fans had interest in seeing no hit this man off case. my screen whilst most wwe fans i didn't even know who he, was, who he was being thanks to his ufc for days, real there wasn't exactly a demand to see him in wwe and booking him in the title picture was a move that turned fans against him the match between Velasquez and Lesnar took place at the Crown in 2019. No more. And heading into the match, there were rumblings that WWE could pull an upset and crown a new champion. However, the match would end up lasting just two minutes, as Lesnar made Velasquez tap out to the Kimura lock. This match was universally bashed by fans, and it was collectively considered a waste of everyone's I watched this live. time. Horrible. This would end up being Velasquez's only televised WWE match, making Velasquez one of the biggest busts in WWE history. What you were about to see yeah. shocked the nation. That was not needed. And this was the era of wrestling where like Vince was almost at his most Number seven, He was making Walter. a lot of horrible During his time decisions. on the NXT UK brand, Gunther, who was known as Walter at the time, was presented as a final boss style character, and he was pretty much unbeatable. However, when Gunther faced off with Ilya Dragunov, I didn't know he WWE tapped had finally found the, the one time to Ilya. That's Gunther crazy, though. And this UK match title. was amazing. I'm glad they showcased this. One of the most exceptional matches of the past decade, and it was so celebrated that it was awarded 5.25 stars by Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. The match would end in an abrupt yet satisfying manner as Dragunov locked in a sleeper hold onto the ring general, and the hold was so tight that Gunther had no choice to tap out. It was a huge surprise that WWE decided to book Gunther to tap out, as whilst right. it was expected that Gunther would drop the title on this historic evening, a tap out loss seemed out of the question. Number 6, Becky Lynch. I didn't know that was the only one that's cool WWE though. By the time WWE arrived at the 2019 Royal Rumble, Becky Lynch had emerged as the most popular talent in the company. Therefore, when Lynch took on Asuka in the opening contest of the Rumble, fans expected Lynch to either I win remember the match or this. In defeat. And, and then went on to enter the Rumble, yeah. After an outstanding match that is incredibly underrated in the grand scheme of things. Despite losing by a tap out, the 2019 Royal Rumble would go on to become a night Lynch and her fans would never forget. Yep. She ended up winning the women's Rumble match later in the evening and would go on to headline WrestleMania 35. Number 5 Stone Cold Steve Austin In the summer of 2001, WWE proceeded with a heel Stone Cold Steve Austin versus a babyface Kurt. So, before we get into this one, that match with Becky at the Rumble with Asuka, I watched that live too. That was a great, great match. I was surprised as well to see her lose to a tap out nonetheless. I knew it was Oscar at the time, like she was still Oscar. So like, you know, Becky wasn't to the superstardom that she is here yet. So like, I mean, it was it was shocking, but like, as expected, I, I felt like once I saw that, maybe she could enter the Rumble, the shenanigans happened, and then boom, she was in. So it, it, it worked out, you know. Austin versus a babyface Kurt Angle feud for the WWE title. I remember that. Whilst there was a <laughs> concern at first that this would be an odd mix for a 2001 program, fans ate it up, and the two legends of WWE managed to bring the best out of each other. Although Angle's run as a babyface was brief, he did have yeah. some wonderful moments, <laughs> and the matches with Austin were tremendous, especially the two pay-per-view matches at SummerSlam and Unforgiven, mm -hmm. respectively. Speaking of the Unforgiven matchup, WWE did the unthinkable in the match as they had Austin tap out to Angle. It was one of the key moments of WWE programming in 2001. It's crazy did though. a magnificent job in putting over Angle as a heroic babyface. Number I didn't four, know that Brock was his only Lesnar. tap out. Oh yeah, because he passed WWE out to Bret Hart. And I, the next big I haven't really seen another tap out Brock from Lesnar. Steve Austin. That's crazy. Lesnar had an incredible look and his in-ring work was the exact thing that WWE fans were crying out for at the time. He was protected in his booking between 2002 to 2003, yet during his second heel run in 2003, Lesnar would begin to tap out more and more on TV, as well as major pay-per-view events. One of the more shocking times this occurred That's was crazy. in the 2003 Survivor Series. 
Chris Benoit, who is slowly being built as one of WWE's yeah. top baby faces, made Lesnar tap out. The I, say, I remember that. This occurred during a traditional Survivor Series matchup, and the crowd reacted as if Benoit had just won the title. When this tap out first happened, fans were quick to assume that Lesnar vs Benoit for the title was the destination for That'd WrestleMania be cool 20. Too. And although that wouldn't end up being the creative direction, WWE did book a match between the two on SmackDown in late 2003, and it was without question pay-per-view main event quality. Number 3. Roman Reigns Upon debuting a heel persona in 2020, WWE put That's extra crazy. focus on protecting Roman Reigns through his booking. Reigns would that go for true. years without being pinned, and when he was eventually pinned by Jey Uso at the Money in the Bank event was, in 2023, it was, it was presented as a huge deal. While many fans often forget about Reigns is that he actually tapped out in 2021 during a premium live event match against Daniel oh, Bryan. Oh yeah, but the ref didn't question see took place it. In the fast lane event, and when the referee was down, Reigns tapped yeah. down to the yes lock. Obviously, due to the referee being down, the tap out didn't count. Yet it was a crazy visual to see this version of Reigns tapping out. That's a the matchup fact, between Reigns bro. and Bryan was exceptional, and it's a shame that the match and the tap out rarely surface when it comes to online discourse. The match took place during the COVID-19 pandemic, so it's completely understandable why fans may have had their minds elsewhere when the match went down. Nah, cause I remember him tapping, and number two, the under. Yeah, okay, so I remember him tapping, and that was, that was a weird era in the COVID era. I didn't think Brian was gonna win. Um, there were some moments that like made me feel like, okay, hold on, he might can. <clears throat> but nothing rang out that like he was gonna win that was a cool way to like just, you know fool the fans and i'm not sure if that was the match where edge was the outside the ringside um like officiator whatever 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 the fuck it was called but like this could have been around that time which led to their triple threat match when the fans came back it was just a cool moment seeing roman tap Undertaker. It's well documented just how much respect The Undertaker had for Kurt Angle. The two had undeniable chemistry in the ring and Angle holds the honor of being the first person to make The Undertaker tap out. What? On an episode of Smackdown in 2002, The Undertaker tapped out to a choke and it was a moment where time stood still. WWE did attempt to protect the dead man with the tap out as the match ended up a draw as WWE claimed that Angle's shoulders were down on the mat. The crazy thing about the particular tap out was that Angle succeeded without needing the ankle lock. Angle made one of the most protected names of all time tap out using moves that wasn't even in his traditional arsenal. This yet again highlighted how much respect and admiration the dead man had for him as he no doubt had a say in the tap out finish. And number one, Which is crazy because they recreated that the spot with Brock years Hulk Hogan later. Tapping out seemed like an impossibility. And yeah, I remember That was this. until Hogan faced off against Kurt Angle at 2002's King mm -hmm. of the Ring. Vince McMahon made the bold call to have Hogan tap out to Angle, and this was a major deal. And it acted as a big time boost for Angle, who was being presented as one of the most legitimate wrestlers in the company at the time. Hogan notoriously often had an issue with putting over other talent, yet according to Angle during an AMA on Reddit, Hogan didn't have an issue with the booking decision. I remember meeting with Vince McMahon and Hogan came into the room. Vince was just off to the side. He basically just said, we were looking at each other and I hear Vince say, all right, Terry, you're going to tap out to Kurt tonight. Terry paused for about five seconds and he looked me in the eyes and he said, okay, let's do this. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 of the most unexpected WWE Surprise, he actually Surely was there to, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised. The Hulkster approved of it and was okay. Leave a comment down below. This was enjoyable. Um, this really was. I wouldn't get that one a like. I'm surprised I'm not subscribed to him on my main channel, but I am on my gaming channel. That's weird. Um, this is really enjoyable. Surprised a lot of these were like, not a lot of them, but there was like one or two for sure that like couldn't remember that like happening but i do remember the both taker tap outs brock tapped out a few times that's why i do remember like seeing a lot of clips of um this was pretty enjoyable if you guys want to see me do more of these leave it down in the comments so i know thank y'all let's move out